Welcome back to the channel, you guys, and the wrap up of our Strat Tele hybrid build. For today's video, we're going to be focusing on the Super V Blade Runner trim and what I think about that after using it for about a week or so. We're going to talk about the Wiggins wooden pickups here, uh, playability issues like stainless steel frets, how I feel about that, um, and the custom switching and a few things like that, just to wrap up my final thoughts about this build. But let's start with the Super V Blade Runner. Let's take a listen to it. <laughs> Now my initial thoughts on the Super V Blade Runner trim after about a week and a half is it's been a really, really positive experience. This thing is really cool. Um, it bolts perfectly to Fender's six screw system. So if you have a Mexican standard or a vintage or a Squire or something with uh, six screws, this will bolt right up, which is awesome. They also make a two point trim, but I wanted to try this version uh, just so I would know how it would handle on that style of guitar because two point trims, you know, typically work really well, but finding a good system for the six screw uh, can be a little bit more challenging. So this has been awesome. Now, the first thing to note about this trim is these four screws that anchor it down, um, it doesn't pivot around that like, you know, fender system. Those are bolted and they never move. But the Blade Runner has a steel blade that goes between the two parts all the way across here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and the whole trim just pivots on, on that blade. So very, very unique system. Um, I've been super impressed with the resonance. Um, it's got awesome sustain. And this is one of the lightest trims I've ever installed in a guitar. When I first unboxed it and picked it up, I'm like, this thing is super light. I was really wondering how the resonance would be, but um, yeah, anyway, sustain has been really, really awesome. So super pumped about that. Um, the action itself is really, really smooth and easy to use. Now, as for potential downsides, um, it's got a screw in arm, which is definitely not my favorite system, as you guys know. But thankfully on the backside, it's got a tensioner. So um, the bar is gonna stay exactly where you have it and there's zero play. So, you know, if I move the tip a millimeter, the whole thing is just gonna move. There's not gonna be any play at all. Um, but I don't love the screw in arm just for, you know, putting in and out of hard cases or whatever. You just have to unscrew it. But in terms of feel, it's like, night and day you know better than anything fender offers and right under here there is oh i'll go from the other side here right here is a little hex screw you just open that up and you have a tightener um, so you can tension the bar exactly how you want it so although it's maybe not as convenient as like a collar or a little set screw here somewhere on the bridge um, you can still achieve the same um, i don't know the same results or the same amount of you know perfect tightness on the bar as any other conventional system. Now, like I've mentioned, sustain has been absolutely awesome. So I'm just gonna hit a chord here, just totally acoustically. Now I can still feel the vibrations. Till now. So really, really resonant. So. I don't know if it's a combination of the woods or the tram or everything all together, but I've got to say, um, I don't feel like the, the blade runner is robbing sustain at all. If anything, I think that blade that runs across the whole tram probably offers more, more contact area than two individual posts with knife edges. I think this whole blade um, really aids in, you know, transferring the vibrations of the guitar. So happy to say I can easily recommend the Super V Blade Runner. It's a great trim. Tone transfer is really awesome. Sustain is great. Um, playability is really good. I think the looks are great. Um, and you can bend the bar, I don't know if you guys can hear that, until it hits the, the back guitar cavity and your strings, you know, they can get a little bit floppy, not quite like a Floyd Rose, but you know, for someone like me, that's tons of room. 
All right, next up, let's talk about the Wiggins pickups. Now, if you missed last week's tone test, I will put a link to that above right now. Uh, we play a bunch of clean tones there, so you can really get a, a sense of the pickups uh, more than you know what I played today with, with all the effects. Um, so check that one out if you wanna hear these babies in action, but they're, they're great sounding pickups. Um, all flame maple tops, and these are not like pickup covers. You know, the top and the bottom bobbins are all wood. So very, very cool, and you can get them in a bunch of different styles. So I knew that's what I wanted for this kind of natural look on the body, um, but I was surprised by what they sounded like. The clarity and stuff was, was really great. Note separation, even when you, you know, add some, some dirt to it, um, they don't turn mushy. So if you want something that's really, really um, clear and bright, um, but without being, you know, too screechy, I think these are a good option. Um, so yeah, really been happy with them. Let's move on and talk about the stainless steel frets. Now, as I mentioned in the build video, this is the first guitar I've ever had equipped with stainless steel frets. So a, a new experience for me. Um, and when I first started playing, there was a certain grittiness uh, to the frets, which surprised me because everything I had read was that they're super smooth, like smoother than nickel. Um, but as I played them in, that all disappeared. So if I take a note, like maybe this E flat on six string that I haven't played very much yet, I haven't worn that fret down. I'm just gonna bring it down to my lav mic here. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear this. Maybe. There, I just moved up to the F. Um, anyway, uh, you can sort of hear there's a slight grittiness to it, but again, after you play that note a few times, that all disappears. So it's probably just the very crowns of the frets, um, you know, smoothing out. Um, but other than that, yeah, all the rest of the frets, just so smooth to bend, um, really cool. And I'm not sure, tonally what difference it makes. I know that Warmoth did like a really awesome job doing a comparison between stainless steel and nickel. So I'll try to link to it above if I can. Um, but if I can't just check their site out, uh, they did a really, really good job like using the same, all the variables were eliminated except for the, the frets. So they did a really, really great job on that. So check that one out if you're, you're interested in the tonal difference. Um, but in terms of playability, um, really, really smooth, really, really nice, uh, nice to play on. And the fret work on this neck from Warmoth is, is superb. There's not like any choking out or anything. I think the compound radius really helps with that. Setup was super easy. I know some of you guys asked if I had to shim the neck or anything. No, I just bolted it on, set up my saddles to the proper radius and started playing. So they did a great job. Um, you know, in terms of mating up these two different parts, I just bolted them together and it was ready to go. So I've had other projects where, you know, it's it hasn't been that easy, but um, yeah, they did a great job on this neck overall. It's got like a really smooth satin on the satin finish on the back. Um, so it gives you that unfinished, super quick uh, <laughs> feel. So yeah, this neck is, is worth the money for sure. Um, and the fact that, you know, I can play on this neck for 50 years and not worry about refretting or huge divots, um, you know, in certain spots on the neck um, or having to recrown it after a year or two. Um, it, it's all just money in the bank. It's awesome. All right, next up, let's tackle our wiring changes. So what I did is I wired our neck pickup to the middle section on our selector switch and I wired the middle pickup to the neck. So the reason I did that was basically so that in position two, instead of splitting the humbucker with the middle pickup, uh, it splits it with the neck pickup, which gives us a really nice T-style sound. Um, and I've been really enjoying that. And the reason is um, I sort of think of this as like a telly with a couple extra sounds. I've got sort of made my five-way switch into like my three favorite sounds. So neck pickup is in the middle, uh, T-style sound is on position two, and then full humbucker for you know your rock sound. So just sort of using those three positions um, makes it really, really easy for me personally to use. And then if I want other you know, sounds. I'll just go to my neck position, which is the, the middle pickup, and then position four is the same, these two together. So yeah, I've really liked that sort of shrinking down the five-way uh, selector to three key sounds. And the other thing I like is it kind of keeps it away from my strumming, strumming hand too. Sometimes in, you know, the neck position, if you strum too hard, you switch. Um, and, you know, having my neck in the middle, I rarely hit that switch. So that's been really great. And lastly, let's talk about the guitar body. Is it worth it getting a T-style guitar body, but with all the modern cutaways that make it a guitar super playable? I think for a build like this, absolutely it is. I think if you're gonna go with a vintage look, um, like, like the surf green one, I can't point while looking at my monitor. Anyway, the surf green one back there, there we go. 
um, I don't think it would, you know, feel as right. Uh, you know, when, when you want a vintage instrument, you want all the vintage appointments. But for something like this, absolutely, it's awesome to play on. Better than any of my strats, uh, for sure. So anyway, you got the, the forearm cutaway here. You've got the massive tummy cut, belly cut right here. And then, of course, you've got the, I'll try to catch it in the reflections again. It's always hard to see right there. You can see the, the heel joint kind of contour and the lower horn scoop right there that lets your hand get right up to the top fret. So yeah, really, really comfortable. Not a, not a hint of neck dive or anything like that. Super balanced, very, very light guitar, which is really great as well. Um, and I've, yeah, overall just been super happy with the body. And like I mentioned, the neck and the body together just give a ton of sustain and really bright kind of attack, which is, you know, a combination, I think, of, of everything on the guitar. So yeah, overall, I think for a build like this where you want something kind of custom looking, going with the contour cuts on a T-style body, no problem at all. Thanks so much for being a part of the build series, you guys. It was so much fun to put together, like all my parts casters. There's a little bit of anxiety because you never know what it's going to sound like, what it's going to look like until you actually put it together and plug it in. Um, so yeah, really, really fun. Thanks so much for being a part of it. We'll be back next week with a bunch of brand new content. So stay tuned to the channel. Other than that, have an awesome week, you guys. We'll play you out with a bit of a jam. Take care.